Well, thank you all for uh, getting together today. Uh, what I want to do is uh, take a moment to thank the people that are standing behind me. Uh, there are road workers, our corrections officers, our teachers, the people that do so much day in and day out to advance our quality of life in this state, uh, who answer the call of public service, who, who actually lead our state forward so many uh, days of the year uh, when we have uh, situations beyond our control, as we saw recently, uh, a snowstorm hit. And uh, we needed to be safe in our communities. The people that answered the sacred call of public service were there for us. Uh, these are the people we count on every day to make our state work, who put their bodies on the line for economic progress. They're our friends, they're our neighbors. The items behind me were attacked last year, attacked by a Republican agenda that only sought to hold back and take away from their quality of life. Not only was it cruel, but it was bad for our state. We have the most educated, skilled, productive workforce in the world, and we put that at risk when we value corporate giveaways over workplace rights, when we see legislation that takes away from their quality of life and threatens the long-term future of our state. We've heard reports from people across the state who have been disadvantaged by the legislation that was passed last year by a Republican governor and Republican legislature that abandoned working families in this state. We've heard from people working in our, our state facilities, uh, such as uh, workers that were um, told that they're no longer going to get overtime pay for overtime work. 2,800 employees in our state who saw a real loss of their earning capacities directly by the actions of this administration. And then we heard from Governor Reynolds that it was a relatively small impact to do that. Well, not to those workers and not to their families, not to the people that they keep safe, who we need uh, having those services provided by qualified, skilled employees to take care of them in our state's hospitals, in our health care facilities. When we talk about our teachers in this state, this afternoon, the, uh, the Senate's likely to take up a bill that will once again underfund our schools against the rate of inflation. And yet our teachers, we're told, they'll have less and less of a voice on their wages, their health insurance, their classroom conditions going forward for the rest of their careers by what happened February of 2017. Now here we are, February of 2018, ready for a better path forward. Let's abandon the mistakes of the past and start actually valuing our workforce again. We can do great things to make Iowa a leader for working families. So we address the number one thing employers tell us is their top concern, the skilled workforce to meet the challenges of a changing economy. Iowa has had a proud history of delivering just that. Public schools that have produced a workforce ready to meet those challenges. Again, the most educated, skilled, productive workers in the world. We value that by showing our actions will meet our promises. And that can be done by legislation that I've been introducing this legislative session. I've introduced two bills uh, just uh, today that would actually start offering that path forward. We have Senate File 186, reinstating public employee bargaining rights that were lost last year, and then getting back to expanding the scope of bargaining so we have workers with that voice in their workplaces. So we can have firefighters talking about protective and safety equipment that they use on fire calls. So corrections officers can talk about the staffing in our correctional facilities to keep themselves as well as their inmates safe. So we can have conversations about health insurance for our teachers that are in our classrooms that are already underfunded and putting more of their own personal resources into their classrooms so they can teach the children in front of them day in and day out. We need to have workers' choice of doctor in this state. Iowa is among one of the minority of states that allow the employer to choose the doctor for an injured worker when a workplace injury happens. We immediately put distrust in the system. Rather than the legislation that was passed last year that limited recoveries for injured workers, that actually held back those people putting their bodies on the line for economic progress in our state, we can offer a positive vision forward. I introduced legislation in the past couple weeks. Not only do we need to 
protect IPERS and public pensions for our public employees, but we need to expand retirement savings to small employers out there who are employing our workforce without options for retirement savings. Retirement Savings Iowa is a piece of legislation that I work with State Treasurer Fitzgerald to introduce so we can have more Iowans saving for their own personal economic future as well as the economic future of our state. When we have more people saving securely for their retirement, having a better quality of life in their retirement years, our communities are better off for that. We've introduced legislation that would allow for equal pay for equal work to be a real reality in this state. We can do the things that we should be doing to enhance the quality of life of Iowans rather than holding back and taking away. It is my challenge that as we are here in February of 2018, a year after seeing an assault on working families in this state, we show working families in this state that Iowa does have a better way forward, that we value the work you do to make our economy strong, to deliver on the future of our state, so we can attract the next generation of skilled workers into our state and retain our best and brightest for our state's future. This is how we grow our economy the sustainable way. This is how we make Iowa a better place to live, a state working families are proud to call home, a state with a bright future. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you again for joining us. We, we have a lot of tough things ahead right now. As I mentioned earlier, uh, today the Senate will be taking up 1% allowable growth. That means for uh, yet another year our schools will be underfunded against the rate of inflation. So uh, before you take off, uh, those of you who are here with a little extra time, make sure you talk to your senators, your representatives about standing up for our schools today when they, when they vote this afternoon. Uh, so I appreciate you being here and thanks again.